sense that this is about uh, making music, not thing that we do. Till you suffocate these flames I'll be the fire, you be the rain You be the whiskey, I'll be the blocks of ice Can you melt the pain away? Can I drown in you tonight? Just tie the weights, time, time You be the whiskey, I'll be the ice Shipwreck, you can be my storm. Break me down piece by piece and send me crashing back to shore. Oh, I'll be driftwood evermore. I'll be the shipwreck, you be the storm. Same preamps as an Apollo, and so it sounds great. And I'm going to show you that. 
here I have a session from a Wales record, the new record that we've been working on for a while, and we are trying to finish. There's never enough time. Um, and this session, I brought it to you, or sent it to you in Cubase, because this is Germany, so I thought you guys would enjoy looking at Cubase, because it's local software. Um, of course, the Apollo works with any software, Focus, Cubase, Logic, Sonar, whatever, it doesn't care. Okay? So, this is a standard uh, Cubase 7.5 session with about, I don't know, 30 tracks, maybe. Okay? And a bunch of things. Universal Audio is famous for their plugins. Who's familiar with the UAD plugins? All right, so the UAD plugins are analog, digital emulation of classic analog gear. They also make hardware. They make LA2s and m 76s They are the authority on how that stuff should sound. And so when they decided to make plugins, they actually started modeling their own hardware and they nailed it. And they built a reputation for that because it's kind of hard to really, really nail an emulation contrary to what everybody will tell you. So, for example, on this arrangement, I have a bunch of uh, different things. Sorry. 1176. Uh, what is this here? This is a MOOC. Model 201. What is this? This is an API. So they've been modeling stuff forever. But what's important to know is that their plugins run on DSP. They don't run on the computer. They run on a special dedicated chip and every Apollo interface has the SP in it. So when your computer gets really overloaded, because you have a lot of stuff on there, because you can't help it, you have to have one EQ with one compressor per channel and 18 reverbs and stuff like that. The UAD plugins will still run smooth because they run on a dedicated DSP, not on the host. That's a big advantage. Let me show you a few things on this session. So for example, on the beginning of the course, there's this piano sound. And um, without the plugins, it sounds like this. It's a really bad piano sample. Okay? And then the first thing I did is crush it a little bit with the 1176 emulation with a very fast attack. Okay? Listen without. That last note is 10 times louder. The attack is really annoying. With everything is level and the attack is less annoying. Then I have a mode filter. It's starting to sound less like a piano, which makes me very, very happy inside. I'm, I'm happy inside. And then give it a little bit of vibe with the space echo. Pretty cool. And in the track, it sounds like this. Track. Now it's growing. 
pretty fun. So now I have uh, these subsets and I have these plugins and everything. And when you start running a lot of native plugins, not even even native plugins, you can run into buffer size problems where you have to up the buffer size. The buffer size on this session is about 1,024 samples, which makes it impossible for me to record Will if I wanted to, right, Will? Sure, sure. So the thing, though, is with the Apollo Twin and all the Apollo series, you get no latency monitoring, which means that you can take a guitar and unmute the, the channel, take a guitar, plug it in, wait a second for this thing to wake up, and then play. You don't have to select a channel, select it, you just plug it in and it works. So you can actually see what's going on, you can do a few bits, you can do lots of things. But you get no latency. So you plug it in, you play. The other advantage of the Apollo system is the real-time UAD processing. Meaning, those plugins I was using in the DAW, I can use on the guitar right now in real time with no latency. Who believes me? <laughs> Who doesn't believe? Who thinks that we've been playing recordings the whole time and we're just lip syncing? Okay, so for example, we can play guitar, and I can say, okay, I want a D1073, and I have acid, and I make it a little brighter, and give it a little bit of an edge, and I say, okay. This is happening, there's no latency. Is there latency? There's no latency. It's not lying, because of this contract says it can't lie. There's no latency, this would have... Still see colors where the Kodachrome is thin. You see me raise the gain? Where does that time go? Where? Why don't we, um, why don't we record or at least listen to the track with your fantastic voice? Hold on one second. So yes, I'm running those real-time plugins, and I'm running these plugins in the DAW. The Apollo deals with that by itself. You don't have to worry about it. Still hear violins, still taste the tonic in the gym. I still see colors where the Kodachrome is thin. Where does that time go? Where did that fire go from your eyes? I replay memories, merry go memories, stuck in time. Complaints? No complaints? I didn't think so. All right, so here's uh, another uh, piece of information. So up to now, as I've told you already probably twice, UA has been doing very good models of EQs and compressors and reverbs and tape machines and all sorts of wonderful things. But up to now, they never really made a true Mac preamp emulation. The reason for that is because it's really hard to do properly. And the reason why it's hard to do is because the magic of truly emulating mic preamp, it happens in the relationship between the microphone and the input stage of the preamp. And that's the hardware thing, and it's really kind of difficult to imitate because the hardware modifies the way the microphone reacts. So what they did is they invented this new technology called Unison that actually is a software remote control of the hardware that lets the hardware behave the way the old mic preamps did. They can change the impedance and they can change the gain staging from the software. The first plugin, first preamp emulation is the UA610. The UA610 is a classic. It is the Putnam classic design. It's the stuff you've heard on Frank Sinatra records and all the Black and Cole records that sound so smooth. 
Um, and the reason why this sounds so smooth is because of the design. And what UA has done is they've built Unison technology, so the remote control technology, into this plugin. So you're able to actually have an exact replica of the UA610 right here with your little small Apollo box here. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to Will sing the first two phrases of the song with and without the uh, Unison technology. Fair enough? Should we do charades instead? No, let's listen to the preamp. Okay, just trying to make sure you're listening. Right. So, listen to the S's when he sings, and listen to the chest of the voice, and the difference between before and after. So first, flat. I still hear violins, still taste the tonic and the gin. I still see colors where the Kodachrome is thin. With. I still hear violins, still taste the tonic and the gin. I still see colors where the Kodachrome is thin. Let's do that again. Listen to the S's and listen to the open S and listen to the amount of extension in the chest. We're going to start with first. I still hear violins, still taste the tonic and the gin. I still see colors where the Kodachrome is thin. With that. I still hear violins, still taste the tonic and the gin. I still see colors where the Kodachrome is thin. With the built-in Apollo Twin straight preamp, you hear a lot faster transits. And the T's and the S's are very lean and very forward. It's a modern sound. With the 610, you hear a more a, a, a slower transit and a more rounded transit, less S's or darker S's. And that's what the transformers and the infinite smashing did. And so you're able to choose your sound. I like the Apollo preamp. If you do a lot of Britney Spears, you could use a clean preamp. If you do a lot of Bill Knox, you could use this preamp. Or vice versa. I'm not sure. All right, we're going to give it on. <laughs> Don't look at me like this. Uh, <clears throat> so, what else? Oh, yeah. Tremendous idea. Here. Why don't we um, do some drums? I went to uh, Williamsburg to record some drums with my friend Aaron Johnson from Brazilian Girls, let me get into those dialogues. Aaron is a great drummer. He's also incredibly fast at setting up his drums, really wicked fast, which is why I hired him, because he cuts the session time in 10, right? And so he borrowed a bunch of drums from his friends, uh, from different friends, apparently, and set up in a living room, because I wanted to show you guys that you can make really great recordings in a living room if you have the right simple amount of gear. Um, he tunes his drums, he likes to put a scarf on his snare drum and toilet paper on his uh, tongs. This is quite a taste apparently. And then I brought my microphones. So I used the Bayer M88 inside the bass drum, great microphone. Uh, and then I used uh, Loudon Audio Clarion on the bass drum outside, two Clarions on the tongs, one in Metis on the snare, and one in Metis on the other hand. And all this is happening in the living room. Um, and I brought my Apollo rack and this laptop that I go everywhere with, <clears throat> and I just, we just recorded it. And the point was to show you guys, uh, it was cold, so we had to wear hats. It's hard to shoot a loft in uh, Brooklyn. Um, and he was, the drummer was asking me some questions all day, so he put a question mark t-shirt on. Yeah. Um, so, let me open the session. No, thank you. Uh, get rid of it. Thank you. It's very verbose. All right. So, what we did is record it straight into the session, but we recorded it raw. No EQ, no compression, nothing. So, you get the microphone, the drummer, the microphone, the cable, the preamp, and that's it. And it sounds a little bit like this. Six microphones straight into the Apollo. And by the way, the twin 
preamps sound exactly the same as the rack preamps, and the converters sound exactly the same as the rack converters. It's the same, it's an important. I usually only use four microphones because I'm fairly lazy, but he was playing the toms a lot, so I had to add two microphones for the toms. But you can do this, you don't need an enormous console and a hundred thousand dollars worth of preamp. Uh, all you, uh, the microphones, all you need to do is have the right amount of small amount of good quality here, and that's how you make a good sounding record. So I think we should listen to the whole song. Before that, I'm going to put a little bit of compression on the wheel here. Maybe an LA2, because that works. And uh, maybe a little bit of reverb and monitoring, just on your voice. Like this. Here we go. So we should listen to the whole song. Ready? Here we go. Oh, it'll work better if I remove the solos. I'm a professional. I'll try this at home. I still hear violins, still taste the tonic and the gin. I still see colors with a coat of chrome. Where does that time go? Where did that fire go? From your eyes, I replay memories, merry go memories, stuck in time. I dance with your ghost. favor am I at least a friendly face or just a stranger with an old familiar way where does that time go where did that fire go from your eyes I replay memories merry go memories stuck in time Daylight. I dance with your boots. 